All right, guys, welcome to part two of the ultimate print on demand startup guide. My name is Joe Robert with podninjas.com. If you guys have not seen part one of this guide, you need to go back and look for that video. This is a three part series. So starting with part two is not going to work. That's how numbers work. You have to start with part one. The link is down in the description. If you've already seen it, that's fine. We can jump into part two today. This ultimate guide is meant to help you get started with print on demand in the correct way. Most people People that are making videos on YouTube about starting a print-on-demand store simply just go and they show you how to actually start a store and they don't actually talk a lot about strategy in this video I'm going to be outlining some of the strategies that myself and some of my six-figure students have used and the only thing that I'm asking from you guys if you enjoy this content is to please subscribe to my channel and if you want to join one of the largest print-on-demand communities on Facebook my Facebook group is linked down in the description so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to actually go in and set up your store by applying some of the strategies that I talked about in part one of this series. If you guys enjoy it, like I said, please subscribe and let's jump into it. All right, so here we are inside of the Shopify dashboard, and I am not going to uh, insult any of you guys' intelligence. Uh, you just need to go to shopify.com and create an account. Okay, I'm not going to waste your time by showing you how to do that because it's pretty straightforward and you just literally go to their website and you uh, create an account, right? And then this is what it's going to look like inside of the dashboard, right? So I showed you guys uh, earlier uh, in this video just a little bit of a timestamp showing you at what points I'm going to be reviewing what. So uh, right now we're going to be reviewing the dashboard. Okay, so when you first open your store, right, obviously we're not going to have a domain name on it. Uh, your domain is just going to be something.myshopify.com, right? And once you actually create a custom domain, uh, it will replace that. Uh, I like to buy all of my domains through godaddy.com. However, you can buy them right through Shopify as well, uh, which is pretty simple to do. You literally just click on add domain. You click buy new domain and you type in the name of the domain that you'd like to buy. If it's available, it will tell you that it is. And then you can simply just buy it and add it to your store. It's really super simple. I'm not going to insult your intelligence or waste your time by showing you how to do it. And because this is just a test store that does not actually get used in real life, uh, we're not going to be purchasing a domain for it. Okay, so we're just going to simply go back to the homepage here. Uh, once you start to get orders, right, they will populate here. If you click this order tab, all of your orders will show up and you'll be able to see it. Uh, anytime somebody abandons a checkout, it will populate here, uh, which is pretty cool because you can see, you know, if people are coming to your store and putting things in their cart and beginning checkout and then not purchasing, you can see uh, their contact information here. Any products that you create will be listed here. I do have some of them already created because I'm going to be using them uh, to show you some things in a little bit. I will show you though how to actually create a product uh, as well, but these are just dummy products that I have created. Uh, once someone buys from you or you get their email address through an abandoned checkout, all of their information is going to go in here. So you'll be able to start seeing all of your customers. Uh, you'll also have this really neat analytics tab where you can see a whole bunch of different breakdowns. You can see your total sales, how many people have been on your store, uh, your average order value, your total orders, uh, your conversion rates on the store, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, you can also change the date ranges here to really uh, whatever you want to see how things are going. Okay, uh, The marketing tab. Honestly, when you're just starting, right, uh, I wouldn't really do too much here. This is a little bit more advanced. Uh, this is, you know, where you might have to pay for some different ads or different apps, sorry. Um, for the most part, most beginners, you know, you got to be focused on growing your store uh, and uh, focused on getting your product set up and all that good stuff. Uh, this is really to come later, okay? Not really a part of a beginner tutorial. Uh, any discounts that you want to create, like if you want to have a custom discount code uh, where someone can come onto your store and enter a code at checkout, this is where it is created. You simply just click on create discount code. You type in the code that you want here. We'll just type in code and then you can change the types. You can give them a percent off. You can give them a fixed amount. So you could do $5 off or something like that. Uh, you can apply it to specific collections or products uh, and really tons of different options in here as well. This is your apps tab right here. So I already have the three print on demand apps that I like loaded in here. And like I mentioned to you guys in part one of this video, uh, these are the three apps that I really like. I have a video on my channel showing a little bit more about these apps. We will take a little bit of a look at them today because I want to show you uh, some really awesome products and we're going to actually create a product today. I'll show you how to do that. 
However, if there is a print-on-demand app that you'd like to use that you don't see here, you can simply just click on the Visit the Shopify App Store button here. It will open up uh, and you can begin to search for various print-on-demand apps. Uh, you can type in the name of the app if you know it. If you don't know the name, you can simply just type in print on demand and you will begin to see a whole bunch of different print on demand apps that are in here. Uh, I would really encourage you to get some feedback on some of these apps. As you can see, uh, there is a rating system in here, but for some of them, uh, like this one, it does have a five star rating, but it only has two reviews, right? So that's not that um, trustworthy because it's only two people actually reviewing it. So. Uh, make sure to get feedback on these apps. Uh, if you guys have not seen my Facebook group, you could join it. You can make a post. There's over 13,000 members. You could ask people their experience and you could get some great feedback. Um, like I said, though, for right now, we're going to be using these three apps right here. All right. So uh, what I want to do now is I want to show you guys how to create a print on demand product. OK, so we're going to go into the Printify app uh, and create a product really quick. Uh, it is very easy to do. Uh, there's a couple things that you're going to need to know, though, about uh, designs, right? So if we just go in here, uh, we'll create a hoodie. Um, when you click on a hoodie, okay, you're going to see that uh, there's a whole bunch of different print providers in here. I don't want you guys to get too overwhelmed with this stuff yet. Um, I do have some guides on podninjas.com on this sort of stuff, but for this video, I just really want to show you guys how to get going, okay? So literally come in here, click on Start Designing, all right? And then on the side here, you're going to see that there's a recommended file size, okay? This 4,500 by 3,000 simply just refers to the size of the image, right? Uh, most images that you see online are going to be much smaller than that. So you're going to want to make sure that you actually meet the exact requirements that they are asking for. And what you're going to want to do is just simply click on add your design. Once you have a design that is that size, uh, you'll be able to simply just upload it. Okay. Uh, if you click on my device, it will upload it from your computer. I already have some preloaded graphics in here because I am uh, getting some things ready to show you uh, some examples, right? So we're going to click on this design right here. And as you'll see, it just kind of pops up on the hoodie. Uh, you can then move it around if you want it on the right side, the left side, whatever. Uh, if you want to do a backsided print, that is that is okay as well. Um, you just need to upload your design there, and it will go right onto the back. Okay. Uh, from here, you will be able to change colors. Pretty much every print-on-demand app is going to have these features. Uh, however, obviously, the layouts will be a little bit different. Uh, and then once you get your designs in where you want them, uh, you're just going to simply just click Next. Okay. And then it's going to load. Uh, if you selected more colors, you're going to be able to select which color you want to be the default image. So when the page loads up for the customer, that is the color of the product that you will see. I have only picked the black color, so that's all we're seeing here. Okay. If it is a shirt or a hoodie or something like that that has something on the back that you really want to highlight and you want that to be the default, you would simply click this and it would show the back of the hoodie. For this, we're just going to use the front. Go to next. Now we can title it. Okay, so you simply just title it whatever you want. We're just going to call this a cat hoodie. Uh, down here, you can begin to edit your description. Uh, I'm going to show you how to edit your description from the product uh, section here in a little bit. Uh, so we're not going to customize it here at all. If you want, you can add a size table. Uh, you just simply click this and it pops up with all the sizes for the hoodie. Uh, then we're going to click next. Here's where you can price the hoodie. So what's really cool, most print on demand apps do have this where it sort of calculates your profit and your percentage uh, based on what you input. You can simply just click this button and it will start to go up. If you'd simply just like to type something here like $100, obviously don't try to sell your hoodie for $100. Uh, you can do that as well, okay? Uh, we're not gonna edit any of these prices just because this is just a demo. Simply just go to the end, click publish product to your store and then click publish, okay? It will then load in and uh, once it loads, someone can actually buy it from you. And I must just say here in the settings section, uh, there is a lot of things in here with payments, uh, shipping, um, taxes, billing, right? A whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this in this YouTube video just because literally I don't want this to be an hour long YouTube video. If you guys want to see more step by step stuff on this, I do have an entire free print on demand course on podninjas.com. It's called the POD Jumpstart. There is a link in the description where there are about 20, maybe 25 videos or something like that that show how to set all this up step by step. Uh, you guys can sign up for that. It's completely free and the link is in the description like I said. 
So now that we have some of our products in here, uh, like I told you before, the strategy that I recommend you guys to use and really why I think this store setup uh, demonstration, how to get started video, whatever you want to call it, is different than any other uh, store setup on YouTube is because we're actually going to talk a little bit about strategy, right? A lot of times people just make a video and they basically give you the Shopify affiliate link so that when you sign up, they can get commissions off of it and they show you how to customize the store. I really want to give you guys a little bit of a base to get started. So so as I recommended in part one, uh, start your general store and pick five niches, right? Once you get all those niche products in here, what you're going to want to do is create collections, okay? Collections are basically just like groups of products, right? So if you've ever seen in a Shopify store menu uh, where it says like hoodies, t-shirts, hats, stuff like that, those are collections. We're going to create collections for each niche, okay? So let's say that you were selling to military moms. That would be one collection. Let's say you wanted to create another one for uh, unicorn lovers. Okay, um, we're just gonna click manual here so it actually lets us save it. Um, and then I'll create a couple more just to show you. Let's say that we were also going to sell to coffee lovers, right? Oops, I forgot. If you don't click manual, it's going to give you an error because when you click automated, it basically pulls data based on tags and stuff. And we didn't set any of that up and I don't recommend to. So just click manual and be able to add our products one by one. Okay, so now that we have our co our collection created, okay, you're going to want to go down to your products tab, right? Any product that you've created, you can add to the collection. We're simply just going to type in Ninja because that's going to show us some of the demo uh, products that I had created. Again, you just simply create your products just like I showed you inside of the Printify app or whatever app that you are using. We're then going to go to our unicorn lovers and I'm going to add the same four products just as a demo here. Oops, there's supposed to be a space there. I'm just going to add these four in because this is going to help us when we actually begin to customize the store. Okay, so we now have three collections, right? Military moms, coffee lovers, and unicorn lovers um, full of products, right? Now, you know, if we navigate over to customizing the store, right, you just simply click on online store, you'll be able to begin uh, building out some different things. Now, obviously, uh, there is a lot of stuff here, right? You can create pages, right, where you could create some sort of an about us page or something like that. You would simply just click on pages. Um, I'll just show you real quick. You would click add page, and then you can literally title it whatever you want, and then you can type about your brand here, okay? Then if you click save, it will simply just look like this. I'll open it in a new tab. See how everything that I typed is right here. All right, and then you could just put this in your menu or something like that afterwards, okay? Uh, another setting in here that you might wanna pay attention to is your navigation, okay? This is where your menus are, right? Your main menu is the one that goes on the top of your store, and then your footer menu is the one that goes on the bottom, okay? Any pages or collections that you wanna add here, you can. You would simply just click on add menu item. You would go here, you'd type in military moms for the link. You would select collections and then military moms and add it, okay? And then now when we preview the store, you will see that military moms shows up in the menu, okay? Uh, you can do whatever you want with a general store. I typically like to keep the general store menu pretty limited because I don't want people who like military moms to also browse my coffee products or my unicorn products. Uh, so I like to keep this to something like home, contact us, about us, and things like that, okay? Uh, you'll also see now that uh, we have begun to look at the actual store, that it looks pretty basic, right? Uh, your store is going to look something like this and we're going to begin customizing it, okay? In order to do that, you need to go and click online store right here and then click on customize again. Now, this is the debut theme. If you don't know what a theme is, basically a theme is just the way that your store looks, okay? You can click here and, and browse a whole bunch of free themes that are offered on the Shopify app. Uh, and then you can also visit the theme store and you can browse uh, themes that are actually gonna cost money. They're called premium themes. Uh, when you're just starting out, I don't recommend doing any of that. Uh, the debut theme will work just fine. It is the one that I teach on all of the time with my private coaching students. Uh, and it's the one that I, I like. You can make it look quite nice. Obviously, once you have a brand that is working really well, and you feel like you want to upgrade things and make it look a little bit more professional, then you could invest in a premium theme, but you certainly don't need one in order to get started. Okay. So, and just a quick side note, note you're, if, if you're not making sales and you feel like things are failing, that won't be fixed by a premium theme, right? A premium theme won't save your business. A, a good product is going to sell on any theme. Okay. So to customize it, simply just click on customize. You'll see that, um, it gives you the preview of the store here. 
Uh, at the top, you can click this button here and that will switch it to a cell phone view. So it will show you what it looks like if someone's viewing it on a cell phone. Uh, just for the sake of customizing it, we're going to leave it right here on the desktop version. Okay. One of the things that I do when I am first starting a store is I delete all of these sections. Okay. These tabs are all called sections. You can basically drag them around and change the layout. You can see that the preview is moving as well. Uh, you can also click add section and there's a whole bunch of different things that you can add in here, which will give your store um, a ton of different customization options. Okay. I typically like to just delete everything when I'm first starting. Uh, I advise you to do the same because most times you're going to get overwhelmed trying to fill all of the pre-filled stuff on the store and it really doesn't need that much content because again we're doing a general store strategy and really all we're trying to do is focus on our product pages because that's where people are going to be going if they're coming from an Instagram account or some sort of ad that we are running. Okay, Now that we've deleted everything we're simply just going to click add section. One of the things that I like to add at the beginning is just a simple slideshow. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a nice little banner at the top. We're simply just going to click add. Okay. Now we're going to need an image. Okay. For this slide. Okay. You can simply just uh, come down in here. Now, one of the things too, I just want to look for something. I wanted to do something different. Uh, I just did not see it and I didn't want to waste time looking for it, but I do not see it. So we will go with the slideshow. Okay. So in order to edit your slideshow, you're going to click on image slide. Okay. And then you can begin to, uh, put in an image here. Uh, you can change the text here, change text to whatever. Also here, custom text. And you'll see that it changes, right? Really rate whatever you want here, something that uh, pertains to your, bland, to your brand. Uh, you can also add a button. So if we just type shop now, you will see that a button will pop up. Uh, we just have to add a link. So if you want to link to a specific collection, you can right here and you'll see that that button pops up. Okay. Uh, in order to get a nice image here, uh, you can use Google, right? You can go onto Google, you can save an image and then put it on your store. You can also use a site called pexels.com. Pexels.com will give you a lot of really high quality images that look great on Shopify stores. Uh, simply just go to the search and type in whatever you want. I'm just going to type t-shirt uh, just for the sake of this. I'm going to check out this image here and I'm going to save it. Okay. I actually already have this image on my, on my computer, so I'm not going to save it again. Simply just come over here, click select image click on upload and then you will select that image and it will load in here. Okay. We're going to click that and then you'll see that it populates right on our store. Okay. Uh, another thing you can do is you can change the position, right? If you want the image to move around a little bit uh, and look a little bit different, you can change it here. It's not that big of a deal. Just kind of have it look how you want it to look. Okay. Uh, because this is a slideshow, the customer can change between images. So you can add a second image here. Same thing. You would just find a really nice image that you like and you would select image and you would upload it. Okay. And then you can see here that every five seconds, the image will change. If you want that to be quicker, you can change it to three. If you want it to be longer, you can change it to nine. Okay. All right. So that is the slideshow at the top. I'm going to just delete the second image here because I only want the first one to show for now. And now we got to add another section, right? And because this is a general store, right? I've said this a few times, a general store should be viewed for testing, right? You're not trying to turn this into a long-term brand. Your sole purpose of this is to test niches and eventually find a niche that is working and bring it to a niche store and build an entire brand out of it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to click add section and we're just going to add our collections that we already created, right? So you're just going to click featured collection and it's going to populate here. Okay then going to change the title to whatever you called the collection, right? All right. So military moms, we're then going to select that collection here and then those products will populate. Okay. One thing that I like to do is I like to keep four products per row. And then that way on a desktop, it looks really sleek and everything stays on one row like that. Right. We're simply just going to do the same thing again, go in here, featured collection, add unicorn lovers like so going to change it to four products per row. And then we would do the same thing again for our coffee lovers. Like so. Okay. And you will see that everything is going to start looking like a real store, right? Obviously you can go in here, you can add images with text or, you know, gallery images or something like that. You can add logo lists. So you could put little logos or something like that on your store. You could do a whole bunch of different stuff in here. You could just simply add text if you wanted to by clicking rich text. You could upload a video if you had one. You could do a whole bunch of different stuff here. But for, for the most part, uh, I like to keep things simple. 
uh, and creating a general store just like this uh, in this setup is what I would recommend you to do. Okay, somebody's just going to click save and then we're going to go back by clicking the little Shopify logo here. We're going to go back and we are going to uh, take a look at some of our products. Actually, one thing I want to show you too is if you click theme settings, you can actually change uh, the colors of text. You can change the fonts, things like that. So if I wanted to change all of my text on the store to be a different color, I could simply just do that and you would see that uh, some of the text begins to change colors, okay? You could change the color of buttons, so if you wanted your buttons to be bright green, you could do that as well, okay? We're gonna simply just click save, and we're going to go back uh, and begin to look at some of our product pages, right? Because as I said before, when we were looking at uh, the Printify app, some of the products uh, had just the basic description in there from the Printify app, okay? Uh, you'll see that it, everything that loads in here is your description, okay? What I would recommend doing is deleting all of this boring stuff, okay? And put something in here that will really attempt to sell your product, right? Talk about the product. Talk about, um, you know, what you're hoping that the person gets out of it, right? You could even put images in here. You could simply just click on insert image and you could select one of the images that you have on your store, right? If you don't have anything and you want to upload a new one, you can just click upload file and then you could put an image into your description. You would then click insert image. Then that image would then go in here uh, and then you could click save and I'll just show you how this looks really quickly. You can see that that image then goes in here, right? Remember we changed the button to be green. If you wanted it to be green, you could. If you wanted it to be pink, it could as well. Again, this product description is really where you focus on branding because with this general store, we're just sending people right to this product page and hoping that they purchase from us, right? So you're gonna wanna make sure that you put effort into this. You're gonna wanna make sure that you really make sure that you brand this product description, put some great images in here and write some great things that are gonna help you to sell your product, okay? Um, obviously, you know, Customizing the store and stuff like that can get uh, really complicated and really complex. You've probably seen a lot of examples of really nice stores out there. Uh, but when you're running a general store and you're just started starting to sort of get your feet wet, really, like I said, the focus is the product page. That's where you're going to begin to make sales uh, on some of these niches. And then, like I said, once you have a niche that is beginning to make a few sales and you feel like it is consistent, uh, that is when you would go and open a, a niche store and build a brand, right? The reason why we do that like I said in part one, is so many people just begin and they start a niche store, right? I'll go back into our little whiteboard here and kind of outline what I was talking about, right? So we have our niche store, right? And a niche store sells to one niche, right? And what happens if this niche is no good, right? You spend all your time, remember when we were customizing this store, right? I told you guys that when you're doing a general store, the homepage doesn't really matter that much. But if you're building a brand, it matters a whole heck of a lot. Right? So if you're just picking a bad niche right, and trying to make sales to it and it doesn't work, you're going to waste all your time. Right? A much better strategy is to pick five niches to start on a general store, pick three products per niche, and begin to try to sell them. Right? And then if it works on one of them, then you open a niche store and you invest the time. Right? Obviously, it's a little bit longer, but you're going to set yourself up for success in the long run. And this is the exact strategy that I've been teaching for over two years now. Okay? Uh, so hopefully that, uh, hopefully this video helped. Uh, hopefully you guys are in the process of beginning your print on demand store. Uh, I would really encourage you to come check out my Facebook group uh, or podninjas.com. Uh, we are one of the largest uh, print on demand communities and online training resources. Uh, and we have a whole bunch more to teach you uh, if you're interested in learning about it. Uh, so come check it out. The link is down in the description for everything. Uh, and I'll see you guys in part three.